This is the 16th video in a series about complex arithmetic methods and geometric interpretations. In the last video, we looked at de Moivre's formula, which says that cosine theta plus i sine theta to the n power equals cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. And then we applied that to deriving a couple of trigonometric identities, this one and this one, by looking at the real and the imaginary parts of an expanded form of cos theta plus i th sine theta all raised to the n power. Let's make this one blue here. Oh, it doesn't make it all blue. All right, there was a mistake actually in the previous video um, in that I had an i here, and I forgot to get rid of it. I should have gotten rid of it. I did that here now. Let's do the same kind of derivation here um, to illustrate doing the same thing with another example. This, this time let's raise it to the fourth power. So we'll go back up here and use the Malvers formula and replace the n with a 4. So de Moivre's formula when n equals 4 would say this is true. Again, we'll use the binomial theorem to expand this out, to take this binomial, the sum of two terms raised to the fourth power, and expand it out. So I'll try to use some copy and paste to save some time. I'm going to go back up here and take what I've got up there and modify it. Again, I don't know why the color scheme ends up being so strange here. Anyway, we'll work with it. So we've got the first term in the binomial that you are expanding to the fourth power. You're going to raise it to the fourth power instead of the third power here. Then you're going to have, instead of three times the first term to the third power and the second term squared. Oops. Mistake there. I'm not sure what happened. Hang with me here. Instead of a 3, you're going to have a, a 4. The second term is going to be actually not squared, just to the first power. Then you're going to have, in the next term, you're going to have a 6 times the first term, the cosine theta, squared. And the second term, i sine theta, is also going to be squared, so I can leave that the same right here. Next, you're going to get the 4 again, times the first term to the first power. So this cube will become a 1, or I won't put it anything there. Times the second term in the binomial you are expanding, i sine theta, to the third power. And finally, the last term is going to be the second term to the fourth power. Okay, you might want to rewatch that if that went by too fast. Think about it. Look up the binomial theorem on your own. I'll quickly review it here. We are expanding this binomial to the fourth power. You can use Pascal's triangle if you like, or you can use what are called the binomial coefficients. To expand this as a sum of, first of all, descending powers of the first term, so the cosine keeps descending in power. Here it's to the zero power, so there's a one there. Cosine to the zero power would be one. And you have ascending powers of the second term, i sine theta first to the zero power, then to the first power, then squared, then cubed, then to the fourth power. And then the coefficients, the binomial coefficients are one, 4, 6, 4, and 1. We'll now rearrange this, grouping together real parts and imaginary parts, and using the fact that, oh, I just can't win with this color scheme here, using the fact that i squared is negative 1. So for example, this i, since you are squaring it, becomes a negative one, so I'm going to take this whole term here and bring it over here with a minus sign. And notice that I also got, uh, well, I want to get rid of the i. 
And I'm going to want to also put the square in here on the sign. I also, I'm also going to get a real part from this term because I have an i to the fourth. Now think about it. If, if i squared is negative 1, then i to the fourth is going to be positive 1. So this term is going to go in here in the real part without an i, and the sign is going to be to the fourth power. These are the two terms that involve an i. This is the imaginary part of the result. This one is just a plain i. This one is an i cubed. If i squared is negative 1, then i cubed is going to be negative i. So we're going to get a sine cubed here without an i, and we'll also get a negative sine. It's without an i because I put the i in the front. And then don't forget your minus sign here. And so because of this, the two trigonometric identities that we can derive from this are that cos 4 theta equals this and sine 4 theta equals this. <clears throat> so let's get those down here. Cos 4 theta is going to equal this. Put that in blue. That is one identity that we've just derived. And sine 4 theta will equal this. Equate the real parts and the imaginary parts. <laughs> I don't get Mathematica's color scheme and how this works. Trig expand again can check this. Confirming first of all this one. There we go. Now we've confirmed this one as well. Yep. Okay. So a couple more derivations from De Mauvre's formula. In the couple minutes that I have remaining here, I want to also show you coming back to Euler's formula. couple other things you can do with it. You can derive alternative representations of sine and cosine. How so? Well, let's think about Euler's formula when the thing we're multiplying by i up here is theta, and let's also think about it when the thing we're multiplying i up here by is negative theta. If I just make appropriate replacements, replace theta with negative theta, I get this, but then I can use the fact that I know cosine is an even function and sine is an odd function to say that I can simplify it to this cosine theta minus i sine theta. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two equations. I'm going to add this equation and this one. Think about what would happen if you add those. On the right hand side the i sine thetas are going to cancel because you have a plus over here and a minus over here. And you'll get cos theta plus cos theta is two, two cos theta. And the left, well, I guess I'm rearranging sides here, I have e to the i theta plus e to the i times negative theta, which you can write as e to the negative i theta. Like this. And then you can just divide everything by 2. Cos theta can be represented for any real number theta at least, and actually this is ultimately going to be any complex number theta as well, in this way. 
kind of cool. You can represent the cosine function using the complex exponentials even when theta is real and actually ultimately again theta could be imaginary and this will still work. What about if you subtract these equations? This one and this one. Subtract the second one from the first one. Well you get a minus sign here and on the right side which I'm making the left side down on the bottom when you subtract the cosine theta is going to are going to cancel I sine theta minus negative I sine theta is going to be plus 2I sine theta. Divide everything by 2I, you can write sine theta in this way. Dividing by I is the same as multiplying by negative I, so we can also say that sine theta is negative i times this thing without an i in the bottom. That's yet an alternative way of writing this. Okay, so a couple more interesting things to note here and things you should know. Alternative ways of representing trigonometric functions, and that'll be the end of this video as soon as I get this in red.